Hey, Marquise, this is Rusty Simmons from the Chronicle. How you doing? I hang in there. How about you? I can't complain, man. I'm blessed to be here. Right on. Take me back to, to last year. If you reflect on it, um, you, you bet on yourself and make good on it. T tell me a little bit about what, what you think about last season. Um, I mean, last season was a roller coaster ride. Uh, you know, making the team off of training camp, uh, that was stressful in itself. And then just going throughout the year periodically, not really knowing where, where I was going to be at. Um, you know, there were times where I wasn't playing as much. Um, and then obviously being waived and, and being signed back and then having my deal converted. Uh, it was a weird season, I think, to say the least. But I guess it kind of was a foreshadow of what the summer was going to be like because it was hectic, um, you know, as far as this pandemic and everything going on. But, you know, I'm grateful that, that they gave me the chance to come here. Um, you know, and I'm happy with myself with, with making the most out of my opportunity. And, and leaning forward a little bit to this year, mm -hmm. obviously you come in as a guy who, who now has a place on this team, um, but the Warriors also draft somebody who plays your position at number two overall. How right. do you take all that into account? Um, I mean, that really doesn't affect me. Uh, you know, I'm going to come and do whatever I need to do, do my job. Um, you know, whether it's coming off the bench or not playing or starting, I'm going to make the most out of my opportunity. Um, you know, and I'm honestly kind of glad to, to have somebody who is, I think I can say is going to go through some of the things that I went through, uh, being a high draft pick and coming into a team really young. Um, you know, so I'm just thankful for the experiences that I have that I can share with him. Um, you know, and I mean, it, it really doesn't matter to me. Uh, he's a good player. Um, you know, and I'm thankful to have somebody like that to, to compete against every day in practice and also to have on my team and go to battle with. Good stuff. Thanks, Marquise. Yep. That's it? <laughs> Marquise, how do you view just kind of the varying skill sets of the center spot that you guys are going into and how that might kind of play in different lines? Um, I think we all offer different things. Um, you know, me as far as my passing and, and trying to play make and things like that. Um, Loon on the defensive end, and he's just a really smart player. And then I think James just comes in and he he does everything. You know, he does everything really well. He's athletic. He runs the floor. Um, you know, he's a true seven footer. Uh, you know, me and Loon are kind of undersized for our position, but you know, I think being in this system, we make do with what we have. Um, so I think it's going to work for us pretty well. Just having a bunch of players who can offer different things at different times in the game is just going to give us a lot of versatility. Have you had a conversation with James yet? Have you seen him? I mean, I know it's so early and it's such a weird time right now. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I see him um, so far during the training camp will practice. Um, yeah. But, you know, I haven't really had like an in-depth conversation with him about anything that, you know, I kind of just want him to let get his feet wet and just kind of feel his way around here and, and find his place. Um, but, you know, I, I've talked to him. We, we've sat down and like when we're playing open gym and things like that and communicated, but Nothing too too detailed or anything. What do you think will be the emphasis for the centers on defense? You know, if you guys are the anchors of the defense, in what ways do you want to help the team improve in that category? Um, I think communication is the biggest thing for us. Um, you know, obviously, a lot of our centers aren't aren't that tall. I would say me and Loon, you know, maxing out at six ten, six nine, so. I think the biggest thing for us is just being real cerebral with how we play and, and communicating and being early, um, you know, just to try to cover up some mistakes that might happen on the defensive end. Um, I think that's the biggest thing. That's what our coaches talk about is just communicating one through five and, and trying to rotate and protect the other person on the floor. Are you seeing the situation as like a three-way competition to be the starter? I mean, you started before, Lou started before, Wiseman wants to establish himself, I'm sure. Or do you guys see yourself as like this three-headed unit just doing whatever you need to do for the team? Um, I, I more so say that we're, we're competing with each other, not against. Um, you know, even like when Amari was here and that was like my bruised brother, I think we all want to find a way to compliment each other. And um, – you know, I don't think anybody's really trying to, to outshow anybody. You know, I think we all offer different things that the team needs, and that's why we're here. Um, and it's up to the coaches to pick what they need at a certain time. And, you know, throughout the season, things might change, and um, different players might play different minutes and have different roles. And, you know, I think we're all open to, to just being able to contribute and help the team win as best as possible. 
Marquis, last year felt like you kind of found your voice in the league as far as being able to move the ball and your two man game with Steph and stuff. But early in your year in your career, you know, you shot three pointers and stuff like that. You didn't do that much last year, but are you trying to kind of expand your game back beyond the three point line going forward? Um, I mean, I'm continually trying to grow as a player. Um, obviously that's part of my game that I want to expand. Um, and I'm capable of doing it. I've been shooting the ball really well since the uh pandemic and everything being uh being shut down. That's all we've really been able to do is shoot. Um, but I do what the team needs, man. The team doesn't really need me shooting three, four or threes a game. Um, you know, if I get an open one and, and I have the opportunity and the game calls for me to shoot, I'm gonna shoot it. Um but playing with, with the best shooter of all time, I really don't need to take that responsibility when he's shooting from 35 feet and making it. So, you know, I just try to try to fit in the role as best as possible um, and just try to help make an impact. Case you guys lose Clay, but in the last you know 10 days or so, you gained James, you gained Kelly, mm -hmm. you gained uh, a couple other players, Maze Moore, Wanamaker, mm -hmm. uh, and you got Wiggins coming back again who joined you guys last middle of last season. Um, how do you feel about the way the team looks on paper going into this season with what you have? I mean, first of all, it sucks, you know, to lose a player like Clay. Um, you know, and I think we all feel for him and we're here to support him, you know, as much as we can through his rehab. But, you know, I'm thankful that we, we got those three players, um, you know, and they're all dogs. You know, Kelly, Kelly's a workhorse. Kent is a workhorse. Um, James is an athletic monster, you know, and and Brad is seasoned. Brad knows how to play in the playoffs. He knows how to to, to fill his role and do what he needs to do. So, um, you know, while it sucks losing the second best shooter of all time, I think we're going to be able to manage um, solely just off of energy. You know, I think all the players that we have play hard um, and just just try to do our best to compete. After all the things you guys went through last year, losing so many games, the feeling of this season and the anticipation of what is possible, how you feel about all of that? Excuse me? Can you, can you say that again? The, the anticipation of what's possible for this year after going through so many losses last year, mm -hmm. and having Steph back, having Draymond, I mean, having the, the whole team around you and what's possible. I mean, we expect nothing but to compete for ourselves. You know, I think um, everybody's looking at us to, to be these monsters, and I think we're ready for it. Um, obviously, not having Clay, it, it makes things a little different. But, you know, I think the players that we have are ready to play. And obviously, we want to make up for what happened last season because it was disappointing. Um, you know, and we all understand that we're better than that. And, you know, situations happen and, you know, it wasn't the best circumstances. But I think this year is going to be different for us just being able to have, you know, majority of our team here um, and just try to manage. I think that's the biggest thing for us to just go out there, and compete and make the most out of the situation that we have. Marquise, this is Rich with Let's Go Warriors. I know that uh, you and Kelly Oubre weren't on the Suns at the same time, but also noticed you gave him a little, you know, congratulations uh, on Instagram when he joined the team. Mm -hmm. Did you have an existing uh, previous relationship with him? Um, I met Kelly like my rookie year when we played against him. He was just, he was cool with Book. Um, and it was just in passing, you know, me and him had a couple conversations and things like that, but you know, uh, I just, I support anybody and I want to see everybody do well, you know, and thankfully he came here. Um, you know, I think it's good for him not to have to be over there no more. Things is a little wild with how they handle things. But, you know, I feel for him being in the situation that he, he was in because that's kind of how I got traded uh, out of Phoenix too. So, you know, I'm thankful that he's here in an organization that, that truthfully wants him and wants him to be the best him that he can be. Um, you know, and I'm glad to have him as a teammate. Like I said, he's a dog. He likes to work hard and he wants to compete. So you can't really ask for much more from a teammate. Thanks. Yeah. Marquise, on one of your earlier questions, you, you mentioned your passing ability. Coming into last year, did you know you had that as, as part of your game? And a second question there, how do you expand that in this offense? I mean, I, I think I'm capable of doing everything. Um, you know, even when I was in high school, I passed. I'm not a selfish player. Um, you know, I find gratification in seeing other people have fun and play. Um, so, yeah, I know I've been able to pass. Uh, it just hasn't really been asked of me that that often. Um, you know, I've been more of just a lob threat, and then if I'm open, shoot the ball. Um, but I just think trying to trying to grow my knowledge of the game and watching how people like to, to catch the ball and, 
you know, where certain people's spots are. Um, you know, and when, when Clay was healthy, I haven't really ever played with him. So I had a conversation with him about, you know, how he likes to catch a DHO and, and bounce passes and things like that. And I've had the same conversations with Steph. Um, you know, it's funny, they don't really care. You know, they just want the ball in their hands so that they can get it up. So, I mean, it's just studying the game and, and studying my teammates and figuring out how they like to catch the ball in the best positions that they can. This is probably an obvious question, but a second year in this system and as you get to know your teammates better, do you think that'll even expand this year? I mean, I hope so. Like I said, I'm trying to grow each and every year as a player. Um, you know, and I think being here ha has helped me uh, exponentially just become a better player all around, I think, and, and, and grow up as a person. Um, you know, I've been in situations where I, I, I really didn't handle them well. And I think being in this organization, they're, they're helping me go in the right direction, I think, just as a person and as a player. So, you know, I'm just going to continue to try to grow as much as I can. Mm -hmm. How hungry and eager are you to get to start playing games against other people here too? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm super hungry to play. I think it, it pisses us all off, um, you know, watching everybody compete and, and have fun. You know, to me, it looked fun. They get to, to go out there and, and continually play while we're sitting at home. Um, you know, but I'm thankful that the season is starting. I'm thankful that it's a new start uh, for everyone. You know, obviously, we've had a super long time off, so we're just trying to you know, get some rust off and, and, and get things flowing in the right direction. But I'm looking forward to the season starting, and, and I'm grateful just to be back. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hello, Marcus. I would like to ask you, what will going to be the biggest challenge for the Golden State Warriors next season? And also about for you, how strange will going to be to play in empty arena? Um, I mean, first off, I think it's going to be weird playing in an empty arena. But, I mean, basketball is basketball. Uh, we're going to go out there and do the job that we have to do. Um, and I think as far as the, the biggest struggle for us, I don't really know. I think bouncing back from, from having, obviously, a disappointing year last year um, and having new teammates, I think just trying to, trying to gain chemistry because a lot of us haven't really been able to, you know, be on the court together except for open gyms and things like that. So that's probably going to be the only thing for us. But, you know, I think – three, four games in, we're kind of going to figure it out. And obviously having a short preseason, we're going to have to try to figure it out a little faster. But, you know, it's definitely possible and it, it, it can happen fast. So I'm not really worried about it. it. It happens to everyone. What do you make of it when you see, if you've seen these things, where people saying you guys won't make the playoffs or you might be sixth or seventh or eighth in the West and all that. What do you make of these things about uh, where the Warriors are in the eyes of some people? I don't care. I mean, everybody's entitled to their own opinion. Um, it doesn't make it a fact. You know, I think at the end of the day, uh, you know, results will show. Um, so I can't really, really bother myself with the opinions of other people. People go out there, it's their job to, to speak on us and say things that they believe and what they, they hope to happen. And it's our job to go out there and do what we're supposed to do. So, I mean, I can't really speak on how people feel about us and their expectations on us because that doesn't really dictate what we do. You know, obviously, like I said, we're just going to go out there and do our best and do the job that we need to do to, to help this team win. Have you seen Andrew Wiggins in person? Yeah, I see him in person. <laughs> Have you noticed anything about his appearance? I mean, he, he looks a little buffer to me, to be honest. He's been slim, but, um, you know, we're not really able to be on the court at the same time, so I haven't been able to, to watch him on the court. Wiggins only had 12 games last season with the team. Mm -hmm. um, but was that enough of a sample size for you to figure out like who he is and what his work ethic is? Yeah, I mean, it, it's weird to me that, that his work ethic is in question. You know, I've never seen anything that would, you know, make me say that he's not a hard worker. Um, you know, I think the game just comes so easy to him that it, it looks nonchalant, you know. And when you're that athletic and that talented, it might look like that, but I've never – question that, that he was working hard or not trying or anything like that. I just think he, he's that good. Um, so, you know, obviously, like I said, people have their opinions about him and about us, period, as a team, and can't really let that dictate how I feel or see other people. I see him 
as a hard worker and he's a skilled player and you know I wouldn't say anything other than that. Marquise, following up on Monty's question, I think you're right that you guys probably don't pay a ton of attention into other people's expectations. But but for you personally, what are your expectations this year? Um, I mean, I just want to have another another uh, good year for myself personally. Um, you know, and I've never had the chance to play in the playoffs, so I think that's something that I want to be able to do. Um, you know, and I just want to have a successful season. I, I personally, I don't think I've ever been in a a winning situation, um, you know, and I think coming here, it, it's it's a winning organization. Obviously, like I said, we didn't have a great year last year, but we did what we could with the circumstances. Um, but I just want I want to be able to play and, and have fun and win, you know, and I think that's what we're going to be able to do this year. And I'm sure you're dialed into what you guys are doing right there, but do you have any time to pay attention to what's going on with the coronavirus in the Bay Area. Does that affect anything that you guys might think could come here in the future in San Francisco or beyond? I mean, I think it affects everything that, that happens with us. You know, I think what happens to the city of San Francisco impacts us. You know, I think we're all part of the community and we're all affected by what happens. Um, you know, so it's obviously disappointing that things aren't kind of winding down. Um, but, you know, that's not really something I can speak on. I don't think I have a, a good enough knowledge as somebody at the CDC. So, you know, obviously I can watch and, and see people and see what they're saying about the situation, but that's as far as I can get with it. Marquis, we're going to have less than 20 days until the tip of uh, 20 days of uh, team practices until the tip off of the season. Uh, you, do you believe that you're going to be ready for the first game of the season? Yeah, I think we'll be ready. Um, you know, I think everybody on this team is a professional. I think we're we're handling it as best as we can. Um, you know, obviously not being able to be on the court with our full team, um, but I don't doubt that it, that anyone will not be prepared for the season. I think we all kind of understand what what's at stake. Um, you know, and I don't think we're going out here to play for nothing. You know, I think we all want to compete and we all want to be able to contend. Um, so we're just gonna we're gonna go out there and be prepared and do the best that we can. This might be a stretch, Marquise, but uh, Andrew Bogut just retired, and he did a lot of the similar things that you do with the DHOs and uh, between the leg passes and that kind of stuff. Have, have you talked to him? Have you watched any of his tape? Uh, does that relate to you at all? Um, I mean, I can't even lie and say that I have. It just kind of was something that I did. Um, I threw the ball through my legs one time, and it, it kind of just became a thing. Um. You know, and it really wasn't even something that I was like, okay, Andrew Bogut did this. It was just the easiest way that I could get the ball to to the the guard running off the DHO. Um, but no, I haven't had a chance to speak to him. Uh, I haven't even seen him, to be honest. Uh, you know, but I think if if he if he is around here, that'll be something that I can and talk to him about and just kind of pick his brain about what he thinks about. Um, you know, when I first got here, I was able to talk to Zaza about you know the DHOs and what he was able to do. Um, but no, I haven't been able to speak to Bogut. Right on, thank you. Yeah, appreciate it.